Ill Sound Radio, we are back in the building. Yo, yo, yo. We got our guests in the building, DJ D93. E, e. What's up, bro? Welcome, bro. What's the word, man? How you feeling? I'm smooth, bro. Y'all know what's crazy. Like, I've been making mixes for these two for like, what, two, three months now? Yeah, for sure. And it's my first time meeting them. That's crazy, right? For hey, real. The internet, bro. That's, hey, it Cause, worked. Because what happened was we needed a DJ, so I went on Twitter, I went on Facebook. And people mm-hmm. was tagging people. I think Kia tagged you. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? And I uh, I inbox you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what's good, bro? You feel me? We both went quiet for a minute. <laughs> and I hit you again. I'm like, bro, what's up? You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> bro, what's up? <laughs> we need that. Hey, hey, you sent that. I got in. And I here agree. we are, man. Hey, appreciate you though, bro. You definitely been keeping us to the end from the start. You know, literally. oh yeah, man. It's it's all love, man. I for I sure. be trying to introduce y'all to something like something new at least every week. So I definitely be asking myself every week, like, what's this banger plan? Hey, look, if you're not asking, what's this song? I'm not doing my job. So if y'all ever get a mix from me, y'all be like, bro, we we know where a song. Mm-hmm. Tell me, you know what I'm saying? For sure. now, at what age did you decide you wanted to be a DJ? Man. Like, how do that even happen? You be like, man, I, I want a DJ. All right, so it it really started back in high school. I started DJing when um when I was 18, um like right before I graduated from high school, um. What happened was one of my homies, um, he was a grade above me, and he was, like, always DJing, like, the parties, like, the Sweet Sixteens, mm-hmm. basement parties, everything like that. So we'd go kick it with him, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my homie, DJ Money Hungry. Sure. Um, you know, we'd just go kick it with him, help him bring his stuff in, you know what I'm saying? That's because we know we getting in free if we helping him out, you right, feel me? Right. So it came a point in time where, like, it was one night I was at a party, and I was just, like, behind a booth just watching him. I'm just like, this look. Fun as hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I wanna I wanna see what's to it, you right. know. And he started taking me in. Um I started getting teachers, um, DJ Eddie Mills, um, DJ INC, you know, those two like they basically like, took me in. Mm-hmm. Um after that, like once I got out to college, that's when it really started taking off. For sure. You know? Now I know being a DJ gotta be hard, you feel me? Because yeah. it, it's like you probably can't go to a regular party and enjoy it like a normal person. And look. <laughs> like, it's so crazy because like if the DJ I got like, the DJ is trash I can't enjoy it myself. Right. Once I want like it take it take about four or five transitions for you to get me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like when the D, if if you got some clean transition uh, some some clean transitions I'm straight like I'm 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 tea the rest of the night. You know what I'm saying? But if it's like terrible I can't do nothing but just like critique them the whole time. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like like I'll be looking at people dancing like they be teed. I'll be like. That was just terrible. Did y'all just hear that? Like, right. y'all really, y'all like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, it be irritating sometimes. But if you're a good DJ, I ain't got no problem with it. Now, you connected with the Illinois family in a different way. Because when I interviewed Pretty Right on my podcast, mm-hmm. she said, I think you was her first interview. Yeah, yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah, back how, at SIU. How everything coming together. So, mm-hmm. let's go back to college and the college parties because i i wanted to go to siu i ain't get in you feel I, me I, I, <laughs> you feel me all my other people they went to siu so yeah. all, all i heard was the stories you feel man, me bro like what where you want me to start <laughs> where you, man the, man like the point that you start being an on-campus dj so my first party um it's crazy um my first party was a capital party that was my first party i dj by myself it was august of 2013 i remember like it was yesterday <laughs> my first party, um matter of fact, August twenty twelve, my bad. It was a Kappa party. What's crazy is Cordero from What's the Word, Cody Mack, he was responsible for booking me for that right. night. You know what I'm saying? So shout out Cordero, you know what I'm saying? He gave me that oop, you know. Mm-hmm. Um but that was my first party. After that, everything just like went it just went crazy. Like me and my bro, Mr. Too Cool, like we was down there DJing together. He ended up coming back to the crib, so it was like I was I was the only one left. You know what I'm saying? Um, after that, like I'm talking about, I started DJing like for all the Greeks. I started DJing on campus events, um, comedy shows, fashion shows. Um, I started hitting the clubs. Then you know what I'm saying? Started touching every. I touched. I literally touched every club in Carbondale. Like I touched every club down there. So it was man. It just <sighs> Law Law Cannon was down there at one point. You know what I'm saying? Like. Rocking the college craze, him and Hoop Dreams, you know, he'd bring Hoop Dreams down there, do a couple college craze. I was DJing those with them, you know what I'm saying? Like, my team lived young. Uh, we created, like, we, man, we we was going crazy down there. Like, we took over this Mexican restaurant called La Fugada. Like, if you, <laughs> hey, look, if you, if you went to SIU 
at the time I was there, and I'm talking about La Fugata, y'all know what's up. You feel me? Like, I'm talking about, like, took over that restaurant. I'm talking about, we was only supposed to have, like, 80 people in there. We was getting 200 people in there. Don't ask how we fit that many people in there, but it worked. It was but lit. It was busting. For real. <laughs> busting. Now, is it, what question was I about to ask? Like, how important is networking in as far as being a DJ? Because it seemed oh, like. Man. You can't get into these doors or you can't get to these big parties without knowing somebody. Yeah, real time. I'm going to speak for myself. Like, for example, like a spot like Promontory. Promontory is where I was like really DJing a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up getting in good with the managers, the security guards, people that work the door, um, the bartenders. I don't even drink and I'm real tight with the bartenders. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was like. The more they saw me, the more they got accustomed to me, the more they got accustomed to my energy. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you just really got to have good energy, mm-hmm. you know, um, let people gravitate to you. Um, when it comes to, you know, just like you said, like just going to going to different places and knowing people like this is very important because, like I said, like if you know those specific people and they rock with you, you're not going to have no problem getting nowhere. Mm-hmm. Especially security. I always tell people, get in good with the security guards because it's always security guards like. If you notice, like, it's a team of security at, like, specific venues. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of those people are, like, at different venues whenever you go. So, it's like, they'll probably see you, like, oh, you was at such and such. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he good. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, and it's it's important for guys to get in good with these people. For sure. Females, y'all straight. Fact, Women they just good. get in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All they got to do is look good. That's it. You know what I'm saying? If you a guy, they instantly 20. DJ D9, how you get the, um? how did you get the name DJ D9? Oh, so I right, so I started off with a different name when I first started. It was it was literally like D and then my last name, and I'm like, nah, that's too plain. You know what I'm saying? That's real plain. So uh-huh. I don't know. Like as time was going by, I'm like, um, matter of fact, it was when I was in college. That's when I came up with it. Um, uh-huh. I just wanted to be different. I started looking up DJ names. Like I really started like doing homework. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? Um, I uh, the first name I came across was D Nice, but we know who got that name now. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know, um, historical person. Um, sure. And then I started just thinking more. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to, like, be, like, a generational representation. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, 9-3, uh, 93, that's the year I was born. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, hmm. I started with D-93 at first, but I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't like how that roll off. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So, that's why I put the dash in between. The num- if you spell my name... <laughs> The dash goes in between the numbers, okay? <laughs> you feel me? So that's how I came up with D93. I'm like, you know, D for my name, 93 for the year I was born. And not only does it represent me, but it represents the generation of DJs that's coming up with me. Right. You know, um, a lot of older DJs kind of look down on us because we growing up with the technology. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, all the controllers started coming out, so it's like, a lot of us don't necessarily use the regular techniques and the mixer and things right. like that. Um, but it's crazy because, like, a lot of us are still capable mm-hmm. of doing that. That's how I learned. I learned how to DJ on the actual vinyl, um, on the vinyl boards. Um, and it's like we just we just growing with technology, you know what I'm saying? It's honestly not our fault. You know yeah, what I'm right. saying? I was going to ask you, like, is that really a thing where if you – DJing off your iPhone Like motherfucker Ooh. Look at you like Man ain't, he ain't real you Yeah gonna look he ain't, he ain't They might look toes. at you Like a goofy You he can uh, You can fully DJ Like off your Like you can sh- I know you can do aux But like you can actually Do the full DJ functions On your iPhone Yeah yeah Oh Legit. yeah times, times. Legit. I ain't never really Been in the DJ booth See what they do But yeah. you can do that Yeah And iPad too Like if you got an iPad Like this whole DJ apps It got the little turns Hey was this stuff on? Like you can really Mess with the turns <laughs> that's, Hey that's low key It's dope. scary Do yeah. you feel like That leads to a power struggle with the uh, with the older DJs, like say if you need something about them, mm-hmm. or you want the, you know what I'm saying? Are you at a party where uh, older DJ is at? Do you mm-hmm. feel like that's a power struggle? Um, because of technology, in a sense, yeah, but also no, because a lot of DJs like they understand their lanes. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own lane. Like an older DJ, uh, more than like he's accustomed to the technique, the actual turntable. So uh-huh. it's like you know he don't necessarily look at somebody with a controller. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody I always look up to is um, DJ B Man. B Man started DJing like when he was a shorty, and you know B Man he's older than us, you right. know. So B Man he started on like the actual technique, the actual turntables, but he also followed the generations as well. So he can work off a controller, you know, if he wanted to. He can work off the actual 
DJ techniques. Like, B-Man is probably one of the most talented DJs I've ever come across. Mm-hmm. You know, just because he can, like, flip back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Like, once the turntables and the controller started creating, like, the beat pads yeah. and everything, B-Man, like, literally, like, mastered how to do that. Like, he could play it like it's a piano. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's scary. You know, That's so, dope. you know, somebody like B-Man, I don't... I don't feel like it'll be a power struck film. Like he, I feel he can, he he can knows, blend. He, he can blend in. Stuff. Yeah. Do you feel like DJ still break records? <sighs> Great question. Man. Some, yes. A lot, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep it real. Um, a lot of people play what's hot now. Um, think about it like this. Like you ever go to a party and you hear like the clothes in DJ. He just play hit after hit after hit. Mm-hmm. Never play nothing that nobody's ever heard before. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. But it is certain DJs that will play like a track that nobody's ever heard before. Like a track that like, now nah, y'all need to know this. Probably bring it back a couple times. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they can understand this something that y'all need to know. And it's crazy. What's scary about this too. Cause I, I'm glad we're talking about this because I had this conversation so many times with like just my close people. Mm-hmm. Like back in the day when people used to break a new record, people was looking forward to it yeah people look forward to a new song you know so it's like when they heard it they're like oh, i ain't never heard this like what's Got this them jumping yeah, for yeah, real yeah. yeah but it's like nowadays when you play something new everybody's attention be like bro what is this right <laughs> what is this? Exactly. Did you, oh bro play that play that money back you know what i'm saying like <laughs> for real. it's like that's, that's because back then it was like when you came up with the in, in like the 80s and the 90s you had these uh, artists breaking out you know what I'm saying and like for some crowds it's like oh this dope this not what I'm hearing in my home like yeah when, something like when like a two short is somebody broke you yep. know what I'm saying yep. they bobbing they hear they shaking uh, to the music all that but now it's like it's so many artists they want to hear who they want to hear right you know? right and it, and that's another thing it's scary uh-huh. because like it's so many artists it's it's easy to like just create music and release it nowadays uh-huh. with the whole technology. Back then, you literally had to go through people in order to get your music heard. You know what I'm saying? But now everything is just so accessible, so easy. For real. That was a lack of radios, all that, yep. man. Cars, all that. <laughs> yep. stuff a long time from. ago. <laughs> For real. <laughs> yeah. Man. Have you ever DJed a party and you completely bombed? Uh, I ain't going to say I completely bombed. My laptop had slightly, like, crashed. Like, it just turned off. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, like... That happened a couple times, and I ain't gonna lie. That's probably like some of the scariest. That's like one of the scariest things that can happen to a DJ. Mm-hmm. You're like, get him out of here! <laughs> yeah. it, nah, I ain't never had that moment. I ain't never had that moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll probably be like, like it'll probably be like what's crazy. It'll be my friends that'll say something like that. You know what I'm saying? Just on some playing stuff. Right. But it's like, bro, don't play like that. Because <laughs> if everybody else join in, then Turn we got a problem. Whole party <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like once I got my laptop going, you gotta. You got to come with a banger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to come with a banger or something like that happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't, you might just pack your shit up. You yeah, feel? So. All right, now, you submitted us a record, 2T. Let's talk about that. Oh, man. So, 2T, that's a, um, I can't even say it's one of my favorite records on the, on the album because, like, all I, I love every song on there for a specific reason. Mm-hmm. But this song in particular I feel like I I love the session, the studio session that I had with this song. Um, it was real authentic. Um, every artist that I have on the project, I always wanted us to be all in the studio at the same time, but mm-hmm. we can never make it happen. But with this session, this is like the most of us that was able to, you know, be in this session. But um, the way the song developed is so funny because I played the beat. Um, it's funny, the beat was supposed to go to Sprato. It was supposed to go to Sprato, so we played the beat. Um, we already we had got done recording the song. Um, Chanel and Laje, uh, they both got a song on there. They um, got done recording their song, so went to the next beat. It was that beat, and um, they like they was making jokes. They like, bro, why you ain't never sent us this beat? Why you ain't <laughs> never sent it? Um, this was supposed to be Sprato <laughs> beat. You feel me? But it was like like as the beat was just going like. Literally, everybody just went around the room, just started like freestyling, like just on some playful stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like it was all play. Like they just mm-hmm. literally went back around the room. I'm like, all right, so what y'all trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like um, we just literally like broke down the song. I'm like, all right, a bar hook, twelve bar verses. One person can do the hook. Three of y'all can hop in the verses. So you do four just, bars a piece. So you just directed the whole song right yep, there, straight like That's that. That's dope. And then it was like, I, I ain't gonna lie, this like this like the Chicago touch it to me. I don't, <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. This is the this touch is it, the Bust the Rams touch it. I swear to God, I swear to God, 
So on this on this on this record is Rado, um, Laje, Kid Pride, Sunit, Chanel True, Keith J, and A Train. Yo, yo, it's your boy Biko. Make sure you head over to the Apple Store and Google Play Store and download the Illinois app right now. From there, you'll be able to stream Illinois Radio Live every Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. As well as stream podcasts, watch interviews, check out the latest news, and so much more. So head over there to your App Store and download the Illinois app. Yo, Sound Radio, we back in the building. We still got the homie DJ D93 up in the joint. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Filling us in on that damn there. Man, I seen the track list, bro. That's a lot of artists. And like you said, you feel like a lot of these artists are in a in a state of being overlooked. And yeah. Was that your was that your grind, uh, getting all these artists together, like trying to get them on this uh, major platform so they all can collaborate and be a unit? Yeah, most def. Um, What's crazy, you know, all the artists that I'm working with, they all, you know, got their own line of work going um, you know most definitely i'm familiar with a lot yeah so like me like i've I built relationships with a lot of them over the years mm-hmm. you know so it's like the 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 idea of creating an album just i've been playing around with this since like 2017 you know um my main artist keys j we was talking about this a lot uh he's on a he's on a few tracks on the project actually True. but um you know we were just talking about this a lot and i'm like you know when it came time like i know like who I want to work with, like who I rock with, because I want to work with who rock with me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And not like on the like, you know, oh yeah, he's just cold DJ. You know what I'm saying? Like I rock with him. Like now, nah, like on a personal level. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because it's talent and everybody that I put on this project. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing was to get them all together. Let's create something. Sure. Let's create something great. You know what I'm saying? And what's crazy? A lot of them haven't. You know. It, they within the same circle, but a lot of them haven't let, like necessarily collab with people. Mm-hmm. Like for example, Yay Nikhil, Yay Nikhil. I actually, her first collab was Chanel True. Like she never collab with nobody in Chicago since right. she's been here. And you know, I got her on the uh, on the song with Chanel True. I got her on the song with Keith J as well. You know, so you know, just for me to be able to you know put her in a situation where she can collab and network with other artists here, mm-hmm. you know, completely now. I I ain't gonna lie, I feel good about that. You for know, sure. so. You know, with the damn near, um, I'm, and I can go into that too. Like the reason why it's called damn near is because everybody that's on this project is at a state where it's like it's just a matter of time. They damn near that. They damn near that. Literally, that. Yeah. straight like that. You know what I'm saying? And then then is it's real Chicago. Mm-hmm. It's real Chicago. You probably ain't go hear nobody else say those two words together mm-hmm. outside of this city. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Special city, man. We you a feel me? City. So yeah, that's really. How long did it take you to put the project together? When I actually sat down and did it, I'm going to say since April, since April, I really just finished everything like last week. <laughs> like, sure. I ain't going to lie. Nice you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, with your role with the album, uh, is are you executive producer, producer? What's uh, what's your position in it? Like completely produce. Completely produce. Completely. Okay, I rock with um, that. I pro- I like I, I I put the songs together. I, I made every beat on the project. Mm-hmm. Sixteen tracks. I made every beat on there. Um, orchestrated every track. Um, it's probably like one track that I didn't necessarily orchestrate. Just I just let the artists do their thing. Right. You know. But every every song is like I you know if I didn't orchestrate it, I pitched it an idea mm-hmm. and we ran with the idea and made it work. You know what I'm sure. saying? So, so with producing, um, because we talked a lot about you DJing. How long have you been in the producing? So I I started I started making beats back in 2017. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. yeah, started making beats back in 2017. That's when I really started. Like, like I graduated from college in 2016. I instantly yeah. went on tour. Um, and then once I got on tour, I came back to the crib. I ended up moving to Atlanta back in it was in December of 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, went on tour in 2017. Went on two tours in 2017 with uh, Cap G. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, it's like one of my homies, actually my homies that um, mix and master the project, Lamar. He was already producing. Like me and him, we went to middle school and high school together, so we always just talk about this type of stuff. He was producing right before me, so I told him like, bro, I really want to learn how to do this now. You know what I'm saying? Like it's time. So, so I'm pull up to the crib, pull up to his crib. He had the MPC out. You know what I'm saying? He was in there making beats already. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, listen. I want you to show me how to make beats. Right. He was like, what you mean? I'm like, I don't want you to give me the water down. 
you dig on how to do this. I want you to. I want to see how you put the beat in there. I want to see when you tap it, how you record it. All I want. I want everything. Sure. So he showed me how to do it. Once he's, I'm like, that's it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's a wrap. <laughs> the his mug down. It's a wrap. Like I'm talking about. After that, I think like a month later, I ended up getting my own NPC exactly like he had one. You know what I'm saying? And it's just been up from there. What are some of the the roadblocks you face putting together this project? Ooh, um, I honestly the biggest roadblock was aligning schedules. <laughs> It was a line in everybody's schedule. Uh, I ain't really faced, like, no hard roadblocks, like, because I feel like the process, it was a fun process. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I feel like I worked, this is probably the hardest I've ever worked on something, you know, just because I want it to sound good. I want it to sound, I want I want everybody to be able to feel it. You know right. what I'm saying? I want everybody to be like, oh, he actually went to work on this. You know what I'm saying? Like, he did his thing on this. Um, but, yeah, it was really just aligning line in everybody's schedules because, like I said, like, all the artists, they their own people as mm -hmm. well, they're their own entity. So, you know, trying to get them away from what they got going on, it was kind of hard, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, look, when you got the time, let's make it work. You know what I'm saying? And and, that, and that's the type of person I am. Like, I ain't finna try to force you, like, yo, like, I be here this day. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, they can all attest to that. Like, nah, like, if you can make it this day, let's make it happen. If you can't, I bet. I'm finna hit up the engineer. Let's set up for another day. You know what I'm saying? So, like that. All right, now, tomorrow you got the, the listening party. Yeah, yeah. Now, the listening party is in Hammond. We know why. I know, man. You feel me? Shout out Hammond because they still open. Hey, Shout out cracking. the whole state of Indiana because they still open. I've seen a lot of people uh, throw events this year in Hammond yeah. just for the cause the COVID restrictions and the lockdown in Illinois. So what can we expect from your listening party? Oh, man. Um, well, one, I, I can't say. Um, so it's sponsored by this liquor brand called Trust Me Vodka. They based out in California. Like I wish I should have brought a bottle with me just so y'all oh, can yeah. see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh -huh. the bottle, like, is real stylish, and I, I kind of like. I really like how Trust Me, you know, operates because they take artists and they create the bottles out of artists' work. You know, so it's really dope. You so know what like, I'm you finna have a damn near bottle? Is what you saying? Damn, that would be raw as it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cold, but nah, it, it ain't gonna be that. True, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But y'all, y'all can't expect, you know, what I'm saying to, you know, be able to take some of the trust me, um, you know, check the brand out, you know, things like that. Um, I'm um, Nitty. Are y'all familiar with Nitty's Knocker? Nitty's Knocker. I heard that name. Yeah, female, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dope, dope person, dope individual. Her and Kia will be interviewing me. Mm -hmm. Um, before I start laying out, um, before I start playing the actual album for everybody, so they're gonna, they're it's gonna, gonna be like a live interview. Yeah, yeah it's gonna dope. be a slight interview or whatever, and then after that, we gonna let the tracks be heard. I'm gonna bring all the artists, every song. You know what I'm saying? Whoever's a part of that song, bring them on stage. Um, you know, they don't have to perform. Y'all don't know this right now, but they ain't gotta perform if they don't want to. But it's like if they want to. Do your thing, you know what I'm saying? We just gonna vibe out. Perform. We just gonna vibe out at the end of the day, you know. But if they want to perform, I'm gonna leave it all up to them. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna force them. You know. Now I know you feel me. The baddies gonna be in the building. Oh man, you know what I'm saying. You know? <laughs> now are you gonna actually be DJing? I might. It's a possibility. I might DJ. Uh, I know I got I got my uh, girl No CK DJing. She gonna be DJing the whole thing. But it's possible. I might hop on. Yeah. You gonna hop on, bro. You gonna hop on. You gonna have to take a shot too. I know you say you don't drink. You nah, definitely see, I ain't gonna. Take a I ain't gonna lie. Like I love y'all. I rock with y'all. You feel me? I love everybody that's part of the project. I love everybody that support me. But I can't take that shot. You feel me? See the see the, the trust me for y'all. Right. It's for y'all. You feel me? I'm you don't rock with liquor at all. Like, nah, I don't drink at all. Like, have you ever drink before? I took a shot in college before. That shit was nasty. That shit was terrible. I don't remember what it was. I took a shot, and when it was like a thing, when it was, I took like half. I had half a can of Four Loco. Oh, that see, that's what it was. The Four Loco. It ain't do nothing to me though. That's yeah. the thing. Like, so, I'm glad you don't drink that shit. <laughs> so with, with not drinking and like, I don't with, smoke either. With, with no with no drinking, no smoking, you yeah. feel like that's your that's your best element uh, sober. Because I don't know if if a lot of DJs do it drunk mm -hmm. or sober, but like, is is that your best element to you? Uh, for me, yeah, I feel I feel like it's one of them. Like I really like vibe off energy. Uh -huh. You know, like my and like <laughs> it's crazy. Like I can I got like a switch. I got a switch button. I got an on and off switch. Mm -hmm. Like. Once I'm on though, it's busting. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's damn near no turning back after that. You know what I'm saying? But like, if I'm off, I'm only off when it's trash. When it's a trash, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes it's off. When I'm on though, it's like, 
I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's yeah. crazy because a lot of people can't have fun unless they intoxicated. I know. Some, and I be telling people all the time, like, bro, fun is you. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Literally. And, and, and fun is technically the people you associate yourself with. Yep. I'm one of the type of people that I can blend with almost any type of crowd. Right. You feel me? So if it's a chill vibe, then I'm a chill. Mm-hmm. If it's turned up and I want to have some fun, then I'm going to turn up yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? But I, I definitely throw me a couple back. <laughs> nah, I'll be, like, nah, I be telling people I can match any vibe. You know what I'm saying? If you high, if you next to me, it's three of y'all and y'all high, I will match y'all vibe. I will say something stupid and y'all gonna be like, <laughs> you ask what? Like, you know what I'm <laughs> like yeah, y'all gonna be dead. You, yeah, you have life, man. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, me. So, what was your favorite? Song off the project. I know you say you feel a different way about all of them. You know they all special to you. you got all Jay them. trying to get me caught up, y'all. <laughs> you gotta have that one baby that is like, man, I like this baby more than the other babies. All right, man. If I was to pick it, nah, bro, better yet, it's... nah, I ain't gonna make you pick. I'm gonna say what would be the first song you would present to the public Okay, all right. to, to be like, oh, yeah, this this one of them joints you need to listen to. All right, I would do, honestly, 2T. I'll do 2T just because, like, how I said, how the session went and just because I know, like, that song is it, different. It's different. Like, when last time y'all ever heard a song with this many Chicago artists on there? Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, can't even send to you, bro. You feel me? So it's like, it's it's just different. You know, like he say, it's different. Keys, it's different. Put it in the comments. You feel me? But you know what I'm saying? Like it's really different. Like I, when when we did the song, I'm just like, yo, the, this is crazy. The last mass Chicago song that I could think of, I think it was called Chicago Conscious. You remember that song? Yeah, with, with uh, Louis now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's the last mass song I, I could think like, of. It was like four, four people. I know, but yeah. still, that's I can't really think of nobody as far yeah, as that. I'm seven, probably sleeping on a few. It's seven people on this song. The last person on this track is. My engineer, like the person <laughs> that recorded every song on here. You know what I'm saying? That's the engineer. That's the last person on here. Really? He, don't, he don't want me to blow his cover, but he be he be rapping. Like he originally producing, you know, uh engineer, but he can low key spit, you feel me? Mm-hmm. He don't be he don't, he don't like people put his business out like that, but A train, you raw, stop playing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say Chicago can't come together, Chicago don't work together. Yeah. Chicago just can't mix together. Now, yeah. I know that not to be true. Obviously you know that not to be true. Exactly. But what can we do to continue to combat that stereotype? I feel like we gotta stop downplaying ourselves. Um we really gotta stop comparing ourselves to these other cities, you know what I'm saying? Because Facts. just like we got our problems, these other cities got their own problems. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? I was living in Atlanta for like four months. You know, when I said I moved in 2016, mm-hmm. I was down there for like four months. And it's like, I see how they operate. It's damn near no different from us. You know what I'm saying? Like, people can like say they rock with you. I don't really rock with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like low key beef everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But it's like with us now, like especially with this generation of artists that's coming up right now, like with the group that I have, I ain't gonna lie, I like to call them like the revival area, uh, the revival era. You know what I'm saying? Because of the fact that the type of music that they're creating is fun, is you know, it's them. You know, it's it's not necessarily like really like too much violence. You know what I'm saying? Like it's lit, it's fun, it's party. You know what I'm saying? It's feelings. You know, um, it's it's just a vibe. You know what I'm saying? But you know, with everybody here right now, I feel like we at a good state right now because I don't really see too much beef going on. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we good where we're at right now. So it's like let's keep that going. Let's continue to work with each other. We ain't necessarily got to, you know, put a price on everything. Let's trade services. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Trade services. Um, When it comes to, like, us working together, let's continue to do that. You know, it's not too many people out here that's, you know, doing too many collabs. But it's like when y'all do, let's. Let's keep that going. You know what I'm saying? Like, the fact that I was able to put this together, I'm grateful that I was able to put this together. I'm mm-hmm. grateful that I was able to get these many people on one project. You know what I'm saying? 14 Chicago artists. What? <laughs> what? For yeah, real? I got Cap G from Atlanta. You know, he he be busy. He be busy. So, I mean, I know that's my, you know, that's what I DJ for. But at the same time, I, I know how he be moving. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, the fact that he was able to make that happen for me, I'm grateful for that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, now. Early in the interview, you said you went on two tours with Cap G. Yeah. So what was that like? All right, so in total, I went on five. So um, Like flex? <laughs> yeah, five tours, you know what I'm saying? But now, the, um, in 2017, that was probably my favorite year of touring. Um, we went on two tours that year. 
the biggest tour we went on that year was uh, the party tour with Chris Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Chris Brown, Fabulous, OT Genesis, uh, Cap, and Casanova. This they was Cass- came to, uh, what is the the out there when you going towards like Aurora? Oh, uh, 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 ooh, what is that? All State Arena. Yeah, I yeah. was in that joint. It was. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was the opening DJ. Shout out to you. Yeah, my baby. I was the open DJ for the entire tour, you know, uh, working hand in hand with uh, Rito Brown and DC Young Fly. Oh, that's you dope. You know what I'm saying? They was hosting. I was DJing with them. We was hyping the crowd up. Like, it was lit, bro. Like That was one of the best concerts I had ever been to. And shout out yeah. to whoever Buddy was that was like, hey, y'all want to just come down here and we move closer <laughs> to the stage, you feel me? But yeah, yeah. They dev- and Dirk popped out, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was definitely a, a lit little concert. Yeah, it was decent. Like, I'm talking about, like, Imagine seeing that for 33 cities. Yeah. I, mean, I was seeing that every night. You know what I'm saying? Well, every other night. You know, we had how was, uh How was gaining that experience, like, Man, being all across the world? It was, I ain't gonna lie, it was surreal because I didn't think I'd be doing something like that so early. Mm-hmm. You know, um, meeting somebody like Chris Brown. Like, the first time I met him was in the studio. Uh, mm-hmm. We was at, Me and Cat, we was in L.A., and we went to the studio. He didn't tell me who was there, oh. and I feel like I understand why. Mm-hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? So, when we got there, you know, um, Chris Brown, he was in the booth. We couldn't see him though. We couldn't hear him because he records like he only want his engineer to hear him. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm like, that's that's valid. And um, when we got the um, Kane Combs was in there, you know, with, um, you know they had the baddies in there and everything. Mm-hmm. So he came out the booth. I'm like, bro, in my head, <laughs> in my <laughs> he head, just walked out there, bro. I'm like, bro, this ain't never what's happening right <laughs> now. <laughs> really? You know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. Cap got up, talked to him, chopped it up. He called me over there. I'm like, damn, that's it. I'm about to meet this man real quick. You feel me? So mm-hmm. I, I ain't never been starstruck before, but it was like, oh, it's Chris Brown. You feel me? Yes. Like, we listened to him. We done grew up with him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? All from him. You know, so it's like, damn. All right. I just had to keep it cool. You feel me? Right. <laughs> keep it cool. Introduced myself, chopped it up, said a couple sentences. That was it. Sat back down. Mm-hmm. Boom. You know, but. But nah, like touring life is touring life is crazy. The last tour I went on was last year in the beginning of twenty nineteen with um it was a paper route tour with Young Dolphin, uh Key Glock. Mm-hmm. And, um that was lit. That was lit. What advice would you have for any up and comer, whether they want to be a producer, DJ, make music, whatever, what, what advice would you give them? Do it. Like <laughs> like do it. Like don't wait. Um if you got questions, never be afraid to ask for questions. Mm-hmm. I mean ask questions if you need help. Never be afraid to ask for help. Um, like, it's still stuff that I'm still understanding. You know what I'm saying? I instantly call somebody that I rock with, like, bro, how you do this? How you do that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's I learned this back in high school and middle school. They always said, be a lifelong learner. Mm-hmm. Never stop learning. Literally, never stop. Because it's always something that somebody else can do that you want to do. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Don't be a hater either. Facts. Please don't be a hater. Like Locking your blessings. You know what I'm saying? If somebody can do something that you can't do, ask them how to do it. If they don't want to oh. show you, that's just them. You know what I'm saying? There's other people out here that can do that that are willing to show you how to do this stuff. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? So. All right, now before we get out here, you got to plug the album, let them know when it drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them know where to slide to tomorrow yeah, yeah. and how they can follow you on social media. All right, so damn near the album drops. At midnight, matter if I'm talking to the camera. Damn near the album drops twelve twenty eight midnight. All streaming platforms, whatever you got on your phone, show. Spotify, Apple Music, Title, Pandora, whatever you got, put it on that. Damn near, <laughs> you feel me? Sure. Album release party tomorrow twelve twenty eight six p.m. to ten p.m. at Pyramid Bib in Hammond, Indiana. Y'all gonna see the fly on my page because I'm gonna tell y'all where to follow me at. Follow me at DJD9 underscore three on Instagram and Twitter. That's D E E J A Y D9 underscore three. If y'all need to get y'all just go back. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy, talk to the people before we get out of here. Man, before we get out of here, man, just wanna shout out uh, J DJD9 for uh, wrapping up our last short of year. 
Man, it's been yeah. it's been yeah, one so start. One. It's been one, quite Ooh. a start for us, man. Ill Sound Radio, you know this our this our official Ill Sound DJ. Y'all see him in the flesh. I see him in the flesh. So appreciate yeah, you for coming through, bro. Yes, sir. Real, appreciate y'all for having me, man. No doubt, man. We gonna we gonna keep it on with an upward for 2021. No doubt. And congratulations to you, brother, for dropping your first major project. Man, you know what I'm saying? It. I know you are gonna hit off big with it, you man. Know? It's Keep crazy. pushing. First but, body of work. You feel me? So I'm I'm grateful. For sure, bro. And shoot, just um follow me at Groove Nuke, G R O O V N U K E. Follow Ill Sound Radio in that order. Illinois Radio in that order. Illinois. Go download the app. Man, check us out. Cause shoot, twenty twenty one, literally right around the corner. Man. Oh my baby. For sure. Hey, uh everything that, that um Jimmy said, man, go follow us on all them platforms. Shout out to you for sliding through. You feel me? Shout man. out you for being our DJ. Always hey, keeping love, us man. The show, man. Appreciate it. Uh, got y'all. I can't wait to hear the full project in in, in one sitting. You feel me? I'm definitely gonna be tuned in tonight. Yeah, yeah. So sure. I'm gonna I'm make sure I share that. I'm gonna go to um uh what is it? Spotify because Spotify lets you share them joint yeah. you know, stories uh-huh. a little different mm-hmm. than the other ones. You yeah. feel me? Even though I rock <laughs> the title, you feel me? I'm gonna show your love. Uh, uh, show you some love on Spotify. Man, love. Make sure all y'all doing that. Fact. Shout everybody. out to everybody out there that, that tune in to us weekly. Everybody that's watching us grow. Everybody that's listening to us grow. You feel me? Because if y'all don't listen, then we may lose passion for it. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to y'all. Shout out to the whole Illinois family, man. We'll see y'all in 2021. Yes, sir. Yeah.